Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for tuning in for what I am sure you can already tell by the title is going to be all about my monthly favorites for the month of September. This video is going to be a little bit different from the usual favorites format. I have a couple like, you know, two, three non-beauty favorites, but the beauty favorites that I have have kind of been really long-standing favorites for me. You're, if you have been with me for a while here on the channel, you'll know them well. So rather than kind of say the same thing I say every month because I love them for the exact same reasons, I thought I'd do a little demo here as well as I talk about them. I think your actions might speak a little louder than words, so I walk you through the look that I'm wearing today, which is, you know, it's a little bit more glammed up, but it's not a far cry from my everyday makeup routine using the exact same products, so I thought that might be a little bit more helpful. So if you want to see all that, let's go ahead and dive. So because the beauty favorites need to be all lumped together, I guess I'll start with my non-beauty favorites. First of all, who's watching American Horror Story? I found a couple of you guys in last month's favorites when I talked about how excited I was that it's starting in September. I personally like the new show format. I'm really digging it so far. I know some people are wishy-washy on it, but I am definitely in the love camp. Next up are some books. I've been trying to get back in the habit of reading or listening because reading I find puts me to sleep. Like during the times that I can actually set aside to read, it's more often than not right before bed. And if I'm actually looking at a book, even though I, I prefer like the, oh, when you hear the crack of a new book binding, oh my gosh, love the tactile experience of a book, but it just, they put me to sleep. So I, for a while, like off and on for the past few months, have been listening to books. And the one that I'm currently listening to is Girl on the Train. I am like three hours away from being finished. And then after that, it's, a, it's just as good as I had hoped. Now I want to see the movie. But after that on deck is This Is Your Brain on Music and As You Wish. These are queued up on Audible, but last month I learned about an app that's like a public library listening app. I forget what it's called. If I can find it before I upload the video, I'll link to it below. But it's effectively the public library where instead of buying the book for 14 bucks, which I have done quite a bit, as you can see, um, you rent it basically like you would from the library. So once I exhaust those that I've already purchased here, I'm definitely gonna give that app a try. And let me know if you've heard of any others like that. Maybe there are multiples out there, but I've just been getting in the groove of listening to books, which I find is more um, stimulating than the other stuff that I do in my free time, like scroll on Facebook. So I definitely wanna continue the habit once I've exhausted that library. Um, what was the last thing I love? Oh, if you follow me on Instagram in my stories, sometimes not as frequently as I would like, but I'm getting into the habit of going to classes like fitness classes and I'm doing it through Studio Hop. For now it's exclusive to Texas. Again, I think I heard about it from the same person that I heard about the public library app, but Studio Hop is very similar to ClassPass where effectively they have a network of studios that you can for a set price a month. It depends on the market you're in, but it's around the $100 mark a month. You can go to classes at a wide array of studios, whether it's yoga or spin or boxing or hit, things like that. But more often than not on a monthly basis, it's much cheaper, like a hundred bucks a month. A lot of yoga studios are just a lot more, like 150, some of them are 200. It gets crazy expensive. And so that was a little bit more manageable for me. And I really like to change up my exercise to kind of keep the momentum going and keep me like ready and excited to work out. And so I've really been digging Studio Hop and what makes Studio Hop different from ClassPass, a couple things. One is it is exclusive to three markets right now in Texas, Austin, which is the one I'm in, Dallas, and I think San Antonio. So I'm sorry all of y'all outside of Texas, but for now it's just here, hopefully it grows because the reason why I prefer it over ClassPass is that you get a limited access to the studios on the platform. There are some limitations like certain studios will say you can come a maximum of five times, but that's just for one studio. So if their entire network of studios is on there, like one in a different part of town, you can go to each of those five times. Whereas ClassPass, the limit is three per studio. And I personally like to stay close to home. Like I like things that I can get to super easily. They're very accessible. Otherwise I just won't work out. That's like the willpower that I have. So I like to kind of find a core set of very different studios like Pilates, Hit, City Surf. I don't know if you guys have ever done the surf. They put like a surfboard on Bozu balls or like the exercise balls to like challenge your stability and they do all sorts of fun stuff there, but it just keeps things fresh, but they're all nearby. But once I found those, I was kind of like, yeah, this gives me the opportunity to mix things up a couple times each week. And with ClassPass, I could exhaust that pretty quickly in a month, but with Studio Hop, I can you know, really go to each one without wearing out the number of times I can go, obviously. So I'll put a link down in the info bar if you're interested in learning more about that. If you are in Texas, of course, 
sorry again if you're not. But now let's go ahead and get into the beauty favorites. First up is foundation, and if you were here with me around this time last year, it was when I was first discovering the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick Foundation. This I much prefer. I'll link to the review rather than telling you over again here. I much prefer this to the liquid though. It gives you, I mean, you can see it here on my skin and me applying it in the demo, but I just, it gives me such a second skin looking finish while still looking natural, lit from within and giving that full buildable coverage absolutely love it. It stands up even on my combo skin, but I do have a fix or another product that I use for these kind of weird, especially in Texas, these weird months where it's like, you know, 70 someday and 95 on some others, other days. And that's like fall here. <laughs> I do have a setting powder that I'll talk about later, but it really, for me, my combo skin lasts all day without breaking apart and getting super messy. And um, and I know a lot of other stick foundations are getting this way. They're, the formulas are just getting so stinking good. But this is one of the first ones I tried where it just felt so light for being a stick foundation. It's not that cakey, you know, heavy product that I feel like I grew up knowing from stick products. Then the concealer and powder that I've really been liking have are the Kat Von D, the Lock It Concealer Cream, and the setting powder, the translucent setting powder. I got these through Influencer. Actually, I got uh, this through Influencer as well, but I got these a while back, did a review on them that I will also link down below. And this has just been my go-to. A couple months back, I really liked the Studio or the Smashbox 15 hour studio wear concealer. I believe that is what it's called, but it's just a tad too dark for me. So I've been going in with this in that little triangle, my under eye area, a little goes a very long way. I blend it in with my finger just because I find with a product this thick and creamy in order to avoid it from caking up, I really need the natural heat for my fingers to help buff and blend it all out. Once it's there, it looks flawless, but then I go and set it with this translucent setting powder, which is exactly what I've been using for the stick foundation as well, just in my T-zone to make sure it doesn't budge throughout those, you know, the 90 degree days in fall. <laughs> On to the rest of the face, the bronzer, blush, and highlight combo I have been loving is, well, let's first start with bronzer since that's the order I applied it in. Once again, I have been talking about this. I think they, the brand Pure Minerals sent this to me very early summer and I have done some serious work on it. Not only do I use this mirror every day for application because it's so big and useful, but this is a dual matte and shimmer finish bronzer. The shimmer isn't too overwhelming, especially when mixed with the matte because I'm wearing a combo of the shimmer and matte swirled all over my face right now but it does allow you a little bit more versatility and before i hit pan up here it was super easy to distinguish between the all matte and all shimmer products you really could take a nice big buffing brush and go into either one for the desired effect or swirl them all together, which is what I have been fond of doing as of late. It really has just proven to be a universally useful bronzer for me on a day-to-day -day basis. Then blush, I went back to the Essence Silky Touch blush. The one I'm wearing today is Life's a Cherry, which I think I flubbed in last month's favorites when I wrote it down. I think it's still incorrect in the um, the description, so I should probably go fix that. Uh, but then the other one that I've also been liking is the Autumn Peach. Either one of these, depending on the eye look that I do. In fact, I probably should have gone with Autumn Peach today, given what's on my eyes, but you know, it works. Uh, but super affordable, and they just do such a good job, and they're matte, so between the shimmery bronzer and the highlight that I wear, they don't really overdo it on the cheeks. They provide that nice, nice touch of balance with awesome pigmentation, so love these. And then for highlight, I have been back in love with Becca's Jaclyn Hill Champagne Pop. This guy. Need I explain more? It's just a really great, I don't know, I picked it up one day and I was like, yeah, that, that explains my fall feelings perfectly. You have like the leftover golden tones of summer, but getting into the warmer peach, not that gold isn't warm, but you know what I'm saying? Like it has the subtle peachy, you know, fally undertones in with it too. So I was just like, yeah, that's my September wheelhouse. Now onto the real star of the show, and that is the eyeshadow palette, which is really what inspired this format of video because I, I realized that I cannot talk about this palette one more time without sounding like a broken record because it is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. At first when I got it earlier in the summer, I was like, oh, this is great for summer. But as I go into fall, you know, these 
like autumny oranges and browns and these neutrals over here with the gold. It's just such a good fall palette as well. So I wanted to create a slightly different look. I have a tutorial, a four in one, where I create four looks in one video using this palette, but I realized I didn't really do a bold orange look. So that's what this is doing today. And it's also, like I said, a more glammed up version of my everyday go-to. Normally I will take the orange back and I use this Realgar. Rhea, I'm not really sure. I hope I'm saying that right. But instead of using this all over the lid, which is kind of what I did in this look today, I will just put this in the in the outer portion of the crease to create a little bit more of a dramatic shadow there. And then I will put Primavera, probably my favorite shadow in the whole palette, even though it's super simple. I'll put that all over the lid and it just creates this great, bright, but still autumn -y feeling daytime look. And then even as we head into winter, not to jump the gun here, but these berries are going to be so beautiful. So I just, yeah, I'm, I'm still in love. Needless to say, it's a great, great palette. I want to highly recommend it if you are still on the fence. The lips are kind of a mix. The two products that I'm wearing today, I wouldn't say, in fact, one of them I literally have just reached for for the first time in months. It's the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in Miss Kensington, which I really, really like, but um, I, I more so reached for it to balance out the eyes because the real uh, lip product that I've been loving was a little too pink, a little too bold for this look, but it is what I've been liking on more of an everyday basis. It's from Jouer. It's uh, Petal de Rose. It's their lip cream in Petal de Rose. When everyone um, that they took to Paris was talking about this, I could not help myself. I saw, ooh, both this and the lip topper. Uh, I mean, who didn't see this on Instagram and was like, yes, please. This is the lip topper in tan lines. I ended up buying both of these because all of them had some discount code, I think. And I've just been really in love with these. One thing to be aware of though, is the lip topper I thought was going to be a shimmery liquid lipstick, like so it would dry and the shimmer would still be there. It is actually a lip gloss. I mean, kind of like it sounds like, but it was just so appealing to me because I thought, oh my gosh, it's actually, you could have the long lasting liquid lipstick as component to your shimmery lip topper. Unfortunately, it's a lip gloss, so it does kind of affect the wear time of the matte liquid lipstick, but Still, I really like the lip combo and especially just wearing um, petal, well, rose petal all by itself. And because I wanna make sure I don't forget to mention it, the lip gloss that I am wearing on top of Miss Kensington is the L'Oreal Infallible Six Hour Never Fail Gloss. See, I think this is an older version of this because they are constantly changing them every time they relaunch, but packaging still looks the same. So it's this guy in the shade Coral Sands. Just the two were like meant to go with each other. So that's the combo that's currently on my lips right now. Oh, and this reminds me, looking in the viewfinder, my nails are another favorite for the month. Impress, you know me, more often than not, you guys, I'm always wearing Impress, like press on nails. The brand here is Impress. These I found at Walmart and I will annotate the actual style they are somewhere here, but basically they're matte. They're this matte, bold navy blue, and then they give you a golden glittery accent nail here. And I asked them, I tweeted at them because I was they, they were in different packaging than the rest of the stuff, and so I asked them, is this an old style or is this something new year? Like, am I getting the last of an old style or is this something new you're coming out with? And they said it's new. So be on the lookout for that. For everyone who always asks me where I get them, I, I search between a mix of Walgreens, CVS, and Walmart. I find more often than not that each of them will have different styles depending on the time of the year, what their inventory is like. So if you can't find the style or the color that's right for you at one store, definitely go, they're always nearby each other. So just go check in another because more often than not, you'll find something that works for you. But I did get these at Walmart, so I have a sneaking suspicion that one or more of these patterns might be exclusive there. Okay, I feel like, I have gabbed. My videos have been really long lately. Sorry about that, but there's just so much to talk about. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this despite how long it was. And I really hope you enjoyed the new format. Be sure and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Besides that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.